Welcome to this video on biofilms. This is just a brief introduction. We're going to talk about what biofilms are, where they form, and what impact they have on human health. It turns out that a lot of what we know about bacteria comes from studies of them in planktonic growth, meaning suspended in liquid, and yet in nature, including in infections, uh, we find that biofilms are often more common than planktonic cells. And so understanding what a biofilm is and how it gives us trouble and what we can expect from it in terms of its behavior is a really important part of understanding microbes in infections. So how do we define a biofilm? A biofilm is made up of bacteria. Sometimes other microorganisms recruit into the biofilm as well. It's key that we know that they are attached to a solid surface. These are not bacteria that are drifting and floating around. They are attached to a surface, and they are embedded in a contiguous layer of EPS. So what is EPS? You may know EPS as a capsule or a slime layer. Some books use the term glycocalyx, if I can spell here. Right? Any of those terms are, are essentially equivalent to one another. EPS stands for extracellular polymeric substance. That's the chemical that is making up the capsule, the slime layer, the glycocalyx. Those three terms refer to the structure that's surrounding so many of our cells. So here in this image, you see a pure culture of staphylococci growing in a biofilm. You can see the gooey, sticky EPS material that has them attached to the surface on a patient's urethral catheter. This would cause a, a persistent urinary tract infection if this was uh, not dealt with. Um, some biofilms are going to be a pure monoculture like this. Others are going to be complex culture with a lot of different microorganisms. So what do they do and why, why are we worried about them when it comes to infections? Well, they cause persistent infections. Uh, if, you have, um, if you have a biofilm of microbes in your sinus cavity, it's very likely you're gonna have persistent sinus infections. If you have a biofilm uh, that's formed on an indwelling catheter like we saw in the last slide, that's likely to cause persistent or recurring urinary tract infections. And the physical nature of this three-dimensional sort of semi-solid structure of microorganisms with all that EPS material makes it very hard for antibiotics to diffuse in and contact the bacteria or for disinfectants, detergents, antiseptics to diffuse in. So chemical control becomes much, much less effective when we're talking about a biofilm. Tissues that have biofilm growing on them, like this poor individual who lost part of a toe has biofilm growing on, on this, uh, um, this external wound, these tissues don't repair very quickly. Uh, repair enzymes, uh, immune system cells like white blood cells have a hard time getting to that tissue that is all coated in biofilm. And then the biofilm can continue to feed on that tissue and continue direct damage to it. And so healing is really Im impaired and um, a wound that has biofilm can continue to get worse because of that biofilm. So they're very tricky for us to be able to treat, particularly chemically. We often have to go in physically, whether that's surgically or otherwise, to remove them. Where do we see them? Urinary catheters, heart valves, other ind indwelling devices, including prostheses sometimes, hip replacements, knee replacements, etc. Surficial wounds like that last image, um, periodontal disease, the mouth is all about biofilms, uh, plaque, dental caries, which are cavities, right, gingivitis, etc., all about biofilms. Otitis media, which is a uh, middle ear infection, sometimes is caused by biofilm, though not always. Same with sinus infection, sometimes caused by biofilm, not always. Uh, cystic fibrosis patients uh, have such a tough time keeping microbes from forming biofilms in their lungs, but CF pneumonia is all about biofilms on these fibers that form in the lungs. It uh, becomes a very, very pro difficult problem uh, to treat. And then endocarditis, heart infections are often biofilms on heart valves and other portions of the heart. Uh, so let's recap our definition of a biofilm. Numerous microbes, not just a single microbe. 
embedded in one another's EPS. In other words, all their capsules, slime layer, glycocalyces, all sort of intermingled, like you see in the bottom right picture here, and attached to a surface. Those are the three key features of a biofilm uh, in terms of its definition. And then in terms of the way it behaves, the key features are that they impede penetration by drugs. So simply treating with antibiotics or a disinfectant antiseptic is, is uh, not likely to be very effective. Wounds that are coated in biofilm do not heal very quickly. And uh, our immune system has a really tough time dealing with with biofilms. Uh, number one, the, the EPS material is not a very strong trigger for an immune response, but number two, you've got this big slimy layer rather than individual cells, which makes phagocytosis very, very difficult. So some our lesson summary, bacteria commonly form biofilms on surfaces. This is a very, this is not a unique, strange situation. This is a very common situation. Common problems on indwelling catheters, implanted devices, wounds, even wound dressings can get biofilms on them. And when bacteria in that biofilm state, they tend to resist chemical controls and they delay the healing and can cause persistent or recurring infections. Thanks for joining me.